let's just sew whatever. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about basically, I've bought an industrial machine, now what do I need? <laughs> Um, I see this question get posted all the time and I get a lot of questions about um, like what kind of thread is best blah 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 so I figured I'll just make a quick little video that you guys can refer to if you decide to purchase an industrial or just whatever or not or if you just want to watch it and hang out that's fine too um, so the very first thing you're gonna need is thread I'm including this first so that I can refer to this video and people ask what kind of thread I use um, I went through so many different thread types I actually have um, this wall over here not that this one here is all different threads that I've tried um, so I have tried Gudeman Mara 100 which is way too thin it did work with this machine but it's way too thin it's just a cotton thread it's not gonna hold up. Ask me how I know. <laughs> um, and then I tried Superior Threads, Tex 42, Tex 49, something like that, and I thought it was great, but it would shred in my machine and like I would get fluff. And um, good thread shouldn't do that. Just throwing that out there. I've had that conversation this week. <laughs> in my experience, good thread shouldn't do that. I could be wrong. Again, I'm not an expert. I just do this a lot. Um, so anyway, where I do get thread or the brand that I use um, is the Amon thread. Um, I get this from Sunny Sewing Machines. This video is in no way sponsored. I do not get any money if you purchase from them. I just love the company. They're great, great people and they have awesome colors. <laughs> um, so I use the Poly, which is Tex 90. There's the bonded polyester and there's bonded nylon. I get asked all the time like which one's better. I think I prefer the bonded poly. However, there are better colors in the bonded nylon. Um, so to be honest, I don't notice a huge difference when I'm sewing with these. Um, I would just say the nylon is a little bit slicker. Um, so this is Tex 70 bonded nylon. Um, so they have si uh, size charts, <laughs> uh, color charts on their website. Um, that will help you. It's very accurate. Those, like I said, they're awesome. They will help you if you have questions. Um, you can see the spool size is much different. This one is 5,000 yards and this one is 3,500 meters. I don't know the conversion, <laughs> but um, I have actually gone through several of these, especially black and white. So if you were just starting out, I would say get black and white or get a gray. Um, but I'll show you guys all the colors I have. I just slowly stock up. Let's say I need to buy another black or white. I throw in another cool color um, to kind of help pad out my thread collection. Um, so here are all the different thread colors I have. Every once in a while, they'll have a variegated rainbow that they stock. Um, that one is hard for them to come by, but it's really fun to sew with. Um, and I pretty much just gravitate towards colors that I have a lot of vinyls for or that I notice I tend to use a lot. Um, those are what I will purchase. So I hope that answers your questions about thread. Next is going to be needles. I get this question a lot too. What kind of needle do I use? What kind of needle do I like? Um, when I first bought this machine, I have been used to sewing on domestic machines. So I was like, I'll get a size 16 and I'll get a size 17 or whatever, 14, 12. Those are too small. Unless you're going to be sewing on an 8700, those are gonna be way too thin. So I know this is totally arbitrary, but my favorite size is the size 19. Um, Sunny Sewing Machine also sells these. Why do I love the size 19? I don't know. However, I know that it works perfectly with this thread and it works great on vinyl, it works great on leather. Um, if you're going through anything pretty much thicker than um, let's say maybe four to eight layers of vinyl, like you're working with really thick leather, you definitely want a thicker needle. You might wanna to go to size 21, 22, something like that. But size 19 is just like my sweet spot. I don't know what to tell you. It is what it is. Um, so those are the needles that I get. The next thing you might want to consider are getting different feet for your machine. So I know the 8700 cannot have a walking foot. 
um, but it can get a Teflon foot. So if you purchased an 8700, you might want a Teflon foot for working with vinyl that's stickier, things like that. Um, if you're working with the 1181N like I have, I really don't switch my foot out much, but the only one I do is um, this one. I'll include links down below, um, but it's the 192 right and left, I believe or 190 no not the 193 um it's it's basically like a small workspace foot wow i haven't even opened this one would it be one of my videos if i didn't drop something god help when i have this child so that i don't drop it okay um oh hold please Okay, I got it. Um, I actually got this one from Steve at Sewing Gold. Um, so those are the two companies I would recommend if you're purchasing a sewing machine. There might be others out there that I don't know about. I will say I've never purchased a sewing machine from either of those companies. I got mine from Amazon a million years ago and I, you know. Anyway, so the small workspace foot is just this little tiny baby foot. Um, and I think you can get one on the right or the left, but I actually don't change out the center foot. So there's technically two different feet on a walking foot machine. Um, so there's the outside one and then the inside one where the needle goes. I don't prefer to use the one that comes with a small workspace foot. You can see there's a little hole in the center. I find that my thread gets messed up. My needle hits it somehow. It just doesn't work out, but I will switch off to this if need be for um, getting really close to different hardwares, especially when working with leather. Um, just keep in mind that it's a baby foot. So if you've ever walked with a child, they walk a little bit slower than you. So the foot is smaller. It's gonna walk a little bit differently than it normally would. So you gotta be patient. There's also piping feet that you can get for this machine. I have tried one, I did enjoy it, but again, I just don't reach for it. Um, zipper feet, I don't reach for it. Um, I think if they're, um, if you purchased a 1541S, I've heard that that machine is a little bit wider of a walking foot and it's harder to get to zippers, etc. So you may want to look into one for that, but I don't have any experience with that sewing machine other than playing with it for 30 to 40 seconds. That's what she said. All right, so the next thing you're gonna wanna purchase plenty of is bobbins um some of you may have noticed i have this cart here and i actually just taped um like a thread holder extra little limb to it so that's where i keep all my extra bobbins i like to wind several before i start a bag otherwise you gotta stop find a new one aye, aye. um but anyway so these are the bottoms they are I believe M-Class bobbins and I've gotten these from all over. Sunny Sewing Machine sells them but I've purchased some on Amazon. I will say that my favorites to use aren't actually these black ones. They feel a little bit thinner but I prefer the silver ones that I purchased off of eBay. Again, all the links will be down below. I will let you know if it's an affiliate link. If it says Amazon, it's probably an affiliate link. If it's anywhere else, it's not. Um, but these silver ones for some reason are my favorite, but the black ones aren't bad. They still work. There's no issues. It's just winding them, I guess. I like the weight of the silver. I don't know. It's weird. All right. So the next thing you're going to need is oil. Sewing machine oil. When I bought this machine four years ago now, is it four years ago? Is it five years ago? 2014. No? 2015? <laughs> it just came up in my Facebook stories. I don't know. Anyway, that's when I bought this. So this is a gallon of Lily White sewing machine oil. Um, yeah. So you, you don't use that much unless you clean your machine more than I do. Maybe you do use that much. Um, but it should come with a little um, oil 
spout thing, there are several locations you should oil regularly. I kind of just do it when it starts to make a weird noise. Um, but that is the main thing you're going to want to help maintain the health of your machine. Um, trying to think, the only other maintenance that I have done on this machine is changing out the belt, which isn't too hard. Um, I will need to do that sometime again, eventually, but I haven't in a while. Um, I haven't noticed any, like I said, big issues with that. Um, other maintenance things you may want to consider. Um, this is the belt cover. So I noticed, I think after we moved into this house three years ago, that my belt cover was actually snapped and broken from how much I sewed and like how fast I would go. Um, and it happened again. And so I bought this from Steve from Sewing Gold maybe a year and a half ago and I still haven't changed it because it isn't that big of a deal to me anyway. I don't know if it'll change the noise, but I will give you guys a little tour of the underneath of this machine as far as that goes. Um, so the belt, I've changed that. And then where my thread goes through, um, that has broken on me before and I just contacted Steve with Sewing Gold and he sent me, well, he sent me an invoice for a replacement part. Um, so I, I love working with Steve uh, at Sewing Gold and then there's a Steven at um, Sunny Sewing Machines as well, Sam, etc., and their whole team. So I would just go, if, if you're purchasing a machine, I would go with who is closest to you as far as shipping cost. That's a big thing. Or, you know, whoever you connect with. Go with that. Um, the very last thing that I would say that you need, you don't really need this, um, but I think they're awesome, are these machine magnets that I design and sell. Listen, you can turn anything that's metal into a machine magnet. I will leave a link down below with where I purchased these magnets so that you don't feel obligated to have to purchase through me. Um, but these are super fun. They're really strong. You have to ask for your items back, but um, I use these snips all the time. These are the Tula Pink Easy Snips. There are also some from Famore. Leave the link down below. Um, so I love having them on a magnet that I can just clip right there. And then this is my Tula Pink Seam Ripper, which I use to put holes in my fabric for magnets, nameplates, different hardware, things like that. And I just love that they're right there. Um, so I super glued those magnets onto essentially enamel pins and they're super strong. Um, yeah, I feel like that's, the main things like I tried to sit here and think like what could I not live without what couldn't I live without? did I word that right maybe I don't know um, but those are the main things those very important especially getting started so if you just purchased this machine I would say the very first few things you don't need the magnet um, just saying it um, those are the things you would need the most so now I'm just going to show you guys around the machine. I've done this in another video before, but figured it couldn't hurt to do it again. Don't mind my mess that I've made. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the walking foot mechanism. Mine is much dirtier than it used to be. You can see there's the middle foot, outer foot. Those are not the technical terms. That's just what I'm calling it. And then this is a tension knob. This is a tension knob. And these are foot pressure knobs. Some machines may look a little bit different depending on where you purchase it from. Um, these little holes here, you want to add oil to every once in a while to help filter it throughout your machine. <clears throat> This is how you change your thread. You'll notice that you can't move it down. You need to have your reverse lever uh, activated and then you can turn it. So if it seems tough, that's why. Um, this is your hand wheel. Um, every once in a while, I'll add a little bit of oil in there to oil the belt. My bobbin winder over here. 
And this is the underneath of my machine. So that is my servo motor. It is a friendly brand. I have no idea what that means. You can see that's where I have it set to. This here is the oil drip pan and there's ways you can empty it when needed. This lifts up my sewing machine foot. Um, I have it set to use my left foot. This is just kind of how it came, how it felt natural to me. There's no right or wrong. And then there's the on off switch. I have added this <clears throat> slimline light above the machine. It just kind of clamps on. And then I have this little silicone pen holder that I got from Michaels that works great. So this is my machine on a daily basis. All right, you guys, so that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please ask below. And if I don't answer, I'm sure someone else will. Um, as always, there's also a Facebook group, so whatever, that you can join and also ask questions. Sometimes I'll um, not be able to sleep and scroll through and <laughs> answer questions or something. Um, but that's it. Thank you, guys. Enjoy your new machine.